We're talking a proposed sign ordinance will be up for City Council action later this summer and the ways you can get more information and have input. Joined now by Interim Director of Planning and Community Development, Bob Gumas, to talk about sign regulations and potential some changes that are probably coming up in the in the potentially new, near future. So, Bob, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Sure. And, of course, what we want to talk about today is what's happening, why, and some, some of the public outreach efforts that will be out there for people to get more information other than just what we talk about here today. Yes. Um, so let's start with sort of what kind of kicks some of this off. Supreme Court ruling uh, affected, again, how sign regulations can be enforced. If you could explain just in a brief sense what that meant and what does that mean for what we're having to maybe make some changes to. Certainly. Um, the case is known as Reed versus Gilbert, Arizona. And what the Supreme Court found is that Gilbert, Arizona, like many locations throughout the country, categorized signs by type and very often that included content. Mm -hmm. So for example, in Gilbert, they allowed temporary signs for people to post, or a church in this case, to post a temporary sign um, announcing when they would have services. And they regulated how long before the service and how long after the service it could be up. Right. Similarly, they had similar signs of the same size, same location, that were announcing other things, maybe a business opening or whatever. And they had different time limits in this example. Mm -hmm. And so the Supreme Court determined, well, wait a minute, these are exactly the same type of signs and you're regulating them based on their content, right. not on other things. So the Supreme Court essentially said that that's a violation of the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. And so the um, city of Suffolk, like many locations, localities throughout the country, are going back through their sign regulations to make them content neutral, Got be it. sure their regulations don't impede on the right. free speech. Understand. So kind of basically in a sense treating everybody equal with regard to location, size, those things which are more, you know, uh, sign neutral, so to speak, versus again, well, if you're doing a church sign or a political sign or this type of sign or that, there's no variations there. Correct. Right, in that regard. So, Correct. So, so again, uh, the changes that would be potentially coming, again, uh, pending city council approval. Planning commission, I assume as well, would be involved? Yes, the, the draft ordinance, the status is that we prepared a draft ordinance. It went to the planning commission for consideration in public hearing. Right. Um, they acted on it and forwarded it to the city council for consideration with a recommendation for approval. Okay. Um, where we are now is um, we'd like to be sure we gain additional public comment, mm -hmm. public input. Right. Um, so we'll be holding a series of outreach opportunities right. prior to the city council actually taking a formal action on Got it. on it. Of course, they their procedure would be a formal public hearing right. and, and action, but we want to, before that, kind of get, have opportunity for additional right. comment. Yeah, get feedback from the public, maybe explain some things in a, in a very more of a one-on-one -on -one type situation as the case would be. Um, I know there's an open house scheduled for June 30th here at Suffolk City Hall, that's 6 o'clock. Um, so June 30th, put that on your calendar. Again, that's to get more information about it. You'll have staff that'll be there. Um, sharing information, again, looking for feedback as well, or questions people may have, well, what does this exactly mean for my circumstance here or there? Um, and I know also as part of the um, proposal that's out there, um, the draft ordinance, correct? Mm -hmm. um, in addition to the changes based on the content, again, taking that out of the element, there's also some other changes that are also being proposed as well, correct? Correct. Um, you know, as with any regulation. Um, you learn as technology changes sure. and so this presents an opportunity for us to look at other aspects of the sign regulations with regards to perhaps due to changes in technology that have become challenging, right. problematic, um, no longer are applicable. Um, for the most part we attempted to 
preserve our locational criteria, size criteria, those type of things as much as we possibly could. Sure. Um, but there are opportunities that were presented and some examples of those is electronic message boards. Right, um, right now, for example, the message on an electronic message board, and we've all seen those, is that the frequency of it changing its message is limited to one time per 60 minutes, once an hour. Got it. Um, we are proposing now to make that once every minute. Got it. Um, again, that it seems like a drastic change, Correct. but when you think of really if you sat for a minute, it's <laughs> not that frequently. Right, right. Um, so that's one proposed changes. Other changes associated with electronic message boards and another type of, of signs is sometimes that sign, if you will, that's objectionable mm -hmm. might be because of its brightness. Yeah. Um, and so we're proposing additional changes associated with that um, based on ambient light conditions, Correct. for example, right. without getting too much in the weeds. Right, a, a sign yeah. at night yeah. doesn't need to be as lit up right. as one during the day That's correct. simply because of how dark the background is. Right, right. And of course, in that, people think, well, what bearing does that have? Well, certainly you don't want to make it a nuisance, and you also don't want to be have to create situations where you have distracted driving. Correct. You know, the message is changing every couple seconds. People are continuing to read and not focused on what they're doing. Um, you talk about the time frame. Well, hopefully people are not sitting at a traffic light for an hour. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, if it's a minute, that's certainly more palpable to take in that regard. But I know that's part of the the the, the thought process behind sort of the the regulation that you're talking about. It's specifically on electronic signs. Correct. Right. right. Correct. Um, we're also looking to propose um, allowing a long limited access freeways, for example, for large developments, what typically are mixed use developments, to perhaps have a taller mon monument sign. Um, in those cases, um, again, limiting how many could be within a certain distance of each other, right. one every half mile, perhaps, mm -hmm. um, but increasing, allowing them to be 45 feet Got it. in height. That would be something Right. New. I understand. I understand. And again, this is uh, through Planning Commission. It's uh, up for potential action by City Council in maybe sometime this summer. Is that correct? That's, That's sort correct. of the timetable that we're looking at there. Um, and certainly keep an eye out for the, the council agendas to see when that is going to be on there. But again, the, the real push right now is to make sure y'all are getting information, we are, as a city are getting information out to our residents and business owners when it comes to potential changes, getting their feedback as well to potentially incorporate into that, correct? Correct. Um, because again, you know, you do things in a vacuum, you may not, different perspectives on things and making sure that everyone is on the same page with what's going to be changing, moving, potentially changing, I should say, moving forward. Again, the open house June 30th here at City Council, uh, City, City Hall. Hall. Mm -hmm. uh, I have it in the main lobby there. I know on the website as well, there's information from the presentation that you had previously given to City Council uh, during a work session presentation. That clip is out there online as well, in addition to the proposed ordinance and the PowerPoint, I think, that went along with your presentation. Yes. Correct. Right. And yes. then uh, we'll be sharing this program as well. I mean, obviously, if you're watching it now, you know what's going on, but we'll be putting that out there as well. Again, making sure that people are aware of, of what information is being presented, the potential changes that are coming um, ahead of a public hearing that City Council will have. Yes. And then their at potential action uh, for or against what's being proposed, correct? Yes. Very good. And if people watching this program also, um, another way to get information, they certainly could call the planning department if they had a specific question to talk with staff about, correct? That's correct. So, um, as well as reach out through our planning email. Right. And we'll have that on the screen right now so that people will know what that is, both the phone number and the uh, email address to contact with any questions they may have ahead of, again, anything uh, actually going into action, so to speak. But uh, again, the impetus for all the, the well, the, the impetus for beginning the discussion uh, was related to the Supreme Court case. But again, as you said, the, you know, you always like to reevaluate what's there and make sure that it's current and applicable to what's kind of going on in the community. And as you mentioned, technology, which mm -hmm. we know always changes and making sure that uh, that information is included with there so that you're adapting it to make it workable for everybody. Correct? Correct. 
Very good, very good. Yes. Well, Bob, I appreciate your time today on On the Scene and sharing this information with us. Looking forward to those open houses and the information that will be shared so that people, again, can get well informed before any action is taken and anything goes into place. Very welcome. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate the opportunity. Sure. That would do it for this edition of On the Scene. I'm your host, Tim Kelly. We'll see you next time.